Our reading this morning for Easter Sunday is from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 1 to 21. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they've put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but didn't go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separated from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still didn't understand from Scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb, crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They, they asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said. I don't know where they've put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she didn't realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? Thinking that he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you've put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, don't hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Hello everyone, and uh, it's my privilege this morning to bring a message, an Easter message. Uh, but before I do that, I want to wish you all uh, a really joyful and blessed Easter, uh, joining my welcome with Edwards. Although we cannot physically uh, be together, the Lord is with us wherever we are, and we still want to celebrate the greatest day in history. And through the wonders of modern technology, we're able to keep gathering together as church. And Edward and I, over these past weeks, have been learning new skills. Uh, some of you have noticed uh, that we're learning to, uh, to preach to a camera. We do really, really miss you all. And, uh, but other skills that we're all learning in these new times, we want to hold on to all the good things that we're learning and that God is showing us. You may have noticed that Edward has learned another new skill this past week, and uh, he's cut his own hair, and uh, he's looking really, really smart, and uh, the only thing I'm grateful for social distancing is that he can't reach me with his hair clippers. Anyway, we're going to um, just pray as we come to share God's word together this morning. Father God, thank you for this amazing news that we've read. 
the incredible news that you rose from the dead. As we just look at this passage, may it come afresh to our hearts that we may be filled with awe and wonder once again. In Jesus' name. Amen. Easter Day is a day of celebration, a day of victory, the victory of God's love over sin, over death, over evil itself. It's a rejoicing at the wonder and the power and the surprise of the resurrection. When the powers of evil had done their worst, God did his best, raising Jesus from the grave. Now, the victory of Jesus was easy to miss on that Good Friday when he was crucified and buried, but all that changed on that first Easter morning, the day of resurrection. When the apostle preached in Athens, he said that God had given proof of the victory to everybody by raising Jesus from the dead. He really meant what he was saying. The resurrection of Jesus convinced the first believers that their crucified friend was the Messiah, the Christ, was God himself in the flesh, the victorious king, the king of heaven and earth, who has rescued the world through his sacrifice. For all who believe in him, death is defeated, sin is paid for, a new creation has begun. As Paul puts it, Jesus was the firstborn from among the dead. The resurrection of Jesus transformed those early disciples. In the reading that we had uh, read to us by Edward, John describes that first Easter morning and its effects on the disciples. First, there was Mary, Mary Magdalene. John writes that while it was still dark, Mary made her way to the tomb. Her eyes would have been red from weeping, but she makes her way, dejected, downcast, bereaved. She's there maybe to bring more spices, perhaps just to mourn, Perhaps just to be there because there was nowhere else to be, nothing else to do, nothing else seemed to matter. But as she arrives, she discovers that the stone has been rolled away. Mary is the one who has that double honor to bring the news that the tomb is empty. And later on, she is the first to be able to say, he's alive. She'd seen the Lord, met with him, spoken with him, risen from the dead. The Bible tells us that Mary ran to tell Simon, Peter, and John about the stone being removed. And we're told immediately that Peter and John begin running. They run towards the tomb from their hiding place. There's more running in these verses than in the rest of the Gospels put together. And Peter and John arrive. Sure enough, the tomb is empty. But stranger still, the grave clothes are still there. Had someone taken the body but carefully unwrapped it first? And the wrapped cloths look as though the body had just left them, passed through them. John, the younger man, arrives first, but then Peter catches up and goes straight into the tomb. And then John goes in, and he says he sees the grave clothes still wrapped, as if the body of Jesus had just come through them. And he says he saw and believed, although they didn't yet understand from Scripture that Jesus had to be raised from the dead. And they return back. And the focus again turns to Mary. She's still there by the tomb, weeping, grieving, And she looks into the tomb and she sees two angels. And the angels ask her, why are you crying? And at that moment, she turns around and she sees what she believes is the gardener. But it's Jesus. And we have those amazing words spoken by Jesus. That one amazing word, Mary. That one word changed everything. It was personal. And Mary knew it was the Lord, knew it was Jesus. And off she goes, running to tell the disciples that she'd seen the Lord. The disciples were gathered together in hiding. The doors were locked for fear of the Jewish authorities. It reminds us of what we're experiencing now. Even in lockdown, Jesus can appear to us, each one of us. He's with you right now. 
And Jesus comes to meet them and he speaks to them and he says, peace be with you. And he shows them his hands and his side, the nail marks, the spear wound. It is Jesus, it's real. Those wounds, horrific wounds, still visible but in beauty glorified. And the disciples were overjoyed, says John. Their grief, their fear turns to joy, unconfined. We had earlier read to us by some of our young people a story that Luke tells us in his gospel about two other disciples who were leaving Jerusalem. They were downcast. They were disillusioned. And as they left and as they walked toward Emmaus, they were met by Jesus, although they didn't recognize him at first. But when they broke bread, when Jesus broke bread, they recognized him. And then they're running back to Jerusalem, telling of the news that they'd seen Jesus alive. So there's Mary, there's the disciples, there's the two on the road to Emmaus. They'd all look like, like the losing um, team in the university boat race. You can tell I'm missing all my sport. And, um, but if you, if you see the losing team, they're, they're haunched over their oars. They've rowed for four miles And some of them are crying, some of them look distressed. And then you look to the winners, and they've rowed the same length, four miles, but their arms aloft, splashing the water, rejoicing, patting each other on the back. And that's the kind of image I see that has just brought transformation to the disciples because they've seen Jesus alive. What a difference it makes. They've all been changed. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. It's changed our lives. It's changed the whole of creation because he has begun a new one. Death is defeated. Love wins. Evil has been conquered on the cross. Sin is no longer a curse over us because Jesus has paid for each one of them. And by simple faith in Jesus, our world is transformed. Our lives, our future, our eternity, our hope, This is our story. The Easter story that we read is our story because we have believed in him. The risen Lord Jesus has transformed our lives. And then Jesus speaks to the disciples as the Father sent me. I am sending you. It's that call to mission, to be his co-missioners in spreading the good news. Jesus is alive. So given the importance of this amazing news that Don John tells us, the events of that first Easter morning, the greatest day in history, we might expect that news to be the talking point of our time, of all time. Sadly, it isn't. But I believe that God is at work in amazing ways, especially in this time. He is revealing himself to many people. And the promise still stands that Jesus made, that everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. If you ask, you will receive. And even those who perhaps have a different agenda, that promise comes true. I don't know if you've ever heard of a man called uh, Lou Wallace. He lived in the 1800s, and he was not a Christian, and he intended to write a novel set in New Testament times which would explain why the resurrection wasn't true. But the more he studied, the more he sought, the more he found. He considered the evidence, and he became convinced of the victory of Jesus over death, that the resurrection was true. He found that no serious historians denied the fact that Jesus was crucified and was buried. So what happened to the body? Did the grave robbers take The body, well, the only valuable thing was the spices that Jesus' body was wrapped in and the grave clothes were still there. Did the authorities steal his body? Well, all they had to do to squash the rumor of the resurrection was to say, well, we have his body. Did the disciples steal the body? Well, they were terrified. The resurrection seemed to be the biggest surprise to them of all. And then there were eyewitnesses. They saw Jesus alive, the empty tomb. Some have even ventured to say that Jesus didn't die. He he hung on a cross for six hours, nailed to that cross. A spear was thrust through his side. No, he died. And on that first Easter Sunday, walked out of his own grave. 
Lou Wallace eventually published his novel in 1880. You may have read the book. You've probably seen the film. It was called Ben-Hur, A Tale of the Christ. Another man, a century later, Albert Ross, set out to do a similar thing, disprove the resurrection of Jesus. However, he finally published his book, Who Moved the Stone, under his pen name, Frank Morrison, in 1930. And he began with a chapter called The Book That Refused to Be Written. He had come to faith in Jesus. See, the evidence stands up. Anyone who seeks will find. The Apostle John, who writes the gospel, says he's an eyewitness. He says in chapter 19, the man who saw it has given testimony and his testimony is true. And in chapter 20, as he concludes his gospel, he writes, these things are written that you, you may believe. And through believing in Jesus, you may have life in his name. He loves us so much. The cross is evidence of that. He rose from the dead, the empty tomb. The resurrection stories tell us that Jesus is alive. And we have met him too. And by faith and trust in him, Jesus' promise for us is the same, that we have sought him and found him. We have knocked and the door has been opened. And whoever believes and trusts in him will be saved. So John in the first century, Lou Wallace in the 19th, Frank Morrison in the 20th, and now we have the privilege of proclaiming this truth to our generation. Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, ascended, reigning, returning. Easter Day is a day of celebration, a rejoicing at the wonder and the power and the surprise of the resurrection, a celebration of God's love for us. It is the greatest day. In history. This is what we believe. This is what we proclaim. Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah.